So everybody had a good week? Yeah? Good weekend? So far, so good. So how many of you, and you don't have to answer, this is just for you to think about it, do you find it easier to give or to receive? Just think about it. Give? Easier to give? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think oftentimes people are better givers than they are receivers. Because giving, it's, it's easier. It's, it's within our control. We get to decide to who, when, where, what, to what organization we're going to be, how we're going to give, how much we're going to give. And it doesn't really matter what you give. It could be your time. It could be a gift. It could be a talent. It could be love. It could be a skill. It could be money. There's so many different things that you can give. But I find it easier that giving is easier. Because let's face it, giving feels good. It's so gratifying, right? It's so gratifying. And it feels so good that oftentimes we become compulsive givers. I know I did. And so Google says, if you Google the definition, that to give is to freely transfer something or the possession of something to someone, to hand over to. To freely transfer the possession of something to someone. And I don't know if you caught that, but it says freely, right? Freely. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking to you guys about the nature of giving. There's so many people that are either overgiving, they're undergiving, or they're just not giving the right thing. And the reason I say that is because when I'm going to give something to someone, I have to take into consideration the receiver. I'm not just going to give whatever I want. There's people in my life that I can't have deep conversations with. I can't give that of myself to them because they honestly, they don't care. So it would be, I would be a very bad giver if I, every time I experience them, I'm sitting there forcing them for me to share with them deep topics. That's not being a very good giver. They're just going to get tired of me. And they did because I did it. <laughs> I, I did it. So you, you have to know how to give. And the main thing about it is, I, every time I talk, I talk a little bit about being intentional, being intentional about your day, being intentional about your life. So it wouldn't be any different with giving. We have to be intentional about our giving. We have to give intelligently, give correctly, with joy and with honesty. You got to be willing to ask people what they want. Get to know people and figure out what is it that they want to receive. It's like gift giving for Christmas. There's some people that they have no clue how to give you a gift. I know that my grandma would always send me, you know, yeah, exactly. My grandma would just send me a swishy vest. I'm like, I was 22, like, what am I going to do with a swishy vest? She would send me uh, music, that, CDs with music that she liked, that she liked. So what am I going to do with that? You know, that's not a, she's not taking me into consideration. You know? When you give gifts, I have to take the other person in consideration. So very few people are willing to do that. Very few people are willing to ask or at least pay attention and listen to who the other person is. And we're even less willing to ask to tell them what we want. You know? What ends up happening is we end up forcing dynamics. Which is like I was doing before. I was talking to everybody about what I was learning and thinking that everybody wanted to hear me. That's not the case. So we end up forcing the dynamic. And I think there's a, in relationships, particularly interpersonal relationships, romantic relationships, this happens a lot. Where we're not really knowing how to give to the other. We're not really giving what they want. You know, we often end up giving something that they don't really want or how they want it. And then we don't understand why they're so upset or they don't feel fulfilled. You know what I mean? 
Have you guys heard of the five love languages? Yeah? Okay. In there, they talk about the five love languages and that the way you love and the way you want to receive love may not be the way that your partner wants to receive love or it may not be the way that your partner gives love. But we assume that the way I give love is how he or she wants to receive it. And that's how we, and then we're like, we're in conflict, we're in conflict, we're in conflict because we're not taking our partner into consideration. Okay? We make the assumption that, you know how they say, give what you want to receive? Give what you want to receive? That's like a rule, a law, right? But we make the assumption that if I give to Daniel right here, to Danny, whatever it is I want to receive, I want to receive, you know, someone to listen to me. If I give to Danny that for him and I listen to him, but when I speak, he doesn't listen to me. He's not giving it back to me. But who said? We make the assumption that if I give to Danny what I want to receive, that Danny is going to be the one that's going to give it back to me. It doesn't say that. The law says, give what you want to receive without looking at who or expecting anything in return. Right? Without looking at who. So it means it doesn't matter if it's Danny. And it, does, it may not come from Danny. It may come from a stranger. It may come from a friend. From my kids, a coworker, from my work, just from being receiving in my work. If you do that, then the law says that you will receive. Okay? So the truth is, then you're not giving without expecting anything in return. And then to my conversations with Jody, one of the things that came up. It was like, as we were sharing this idea, how are we going to go about this today? What are you going to say? What am I going to say? And so we're just exchanging ideas. And one of the things that we kind of agreed on was the mistake that we make in giving. The mistake that we make in giving is that we're asking people, more, actually we're expecting people to give us the things that we're not willing to give ourselves. We're not, and we're not, either we're scared or we're not able to give them to ourselves. And so if we're not giving those things to ourselves, first, how could I expect anybody else to give it to me? You just can't. Here's my understanding of giving and receiving. It's the exact same thing. They go together. There is no real exchange. There's no exchange. Giving is receiving because it's life giving to another life. So it's life giving to life. It's source giving to source. It's God giving to God. So yes, even though there's the illusion of a transfer of something, in truth, there is no transfer. Because in the spiritual realm, where the truth is at, there's no exchange. So giving is receiving. And the type of giving that I'm talking about is when you give from within yourself, from deep within you, when you give with joy, the joy itself becomes the reward. When you give like that, from deep within you, that's when you're truly giving. And that's when you're truly receiving. Because it becomes about giving itself, not about the thing you're giving, not about who you're giving. Okay? In my experience, in my story, I find it to be true. I find it the same question that I asked at the beginning, I find it to be true. It is easier to give than it is to receive. That has been my experience. Giving was always easier for me. I'm a giver by nature. But it was, it was, I would say, a little distorted. You know, it was a little bit on the extreme side because it was so much so that I wanted to save people, right? I wanted to help them and change them, right? I, I think I was one of those convulsive givers. But who really needed saving, right? 
I did the same thing. And so the reason I said that is because that's how my relationship, my romantic relationship went. I was like the knight in shining armor that's going to save the damsel in distress. You know? But in terms of my interpersonal relationship with friends, I did the same thing. I, had a really, I have a really good friend that I was trying to help him. Right? I was giving him tips on how to live life better. Right? But according to my, to my rules, right? Because his way was completely wrong. And, but I was really adamant about it. I was really pushy. And I remember one time, I was being really mean about it. And what he said to me was shocking. I, just, I couldn't believe it. He says, you know what? Angel, you have a really toxic personality. And I was like, what? You're crazy, my man. Like, you're crazy. So we, we kind of had a little discussion. But I went home, and that stayed in my mind. It stayed in my mind. It stayed in my mind. It stayed in my mind. And I did some research about toxic personalities. And he was right. I did have a toxic personality. But more so than just realizing that, what I realized is that if I didn't change that, I was going to lose a really good friend, you know, because of I wanted to help people, right? One night, I was, and I didn't read much back then, you know, but every so often I would pick up one of the books that I had and I would open it up to a chapter, and I was reading the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Did anybody remember that book? Did anybody read it? Yeah? In that book, there was a, a, a story of a teacher who, gave, who was trying to do an experiment on perspective. And he gave his students the picture of the old lady that depending on how you look at it, it looks like an old lady and it looks like a young lady. But in that story, in the classroom, he gave one half of the group the picture that only was the young lady. And he gave the other half the picture that only had the old lady. And on the projector, he put the picture that had both. So what he asked this room, what do you see? The young lady. What do you see? The old lady. And they started fighting. Started fighting, 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 fighting. Who, who was telling the truth? They were both telling the truth. And he took a little bit of discussion, argument for them, just like, okay, well, I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah, I kind of see the, the, the necklace right here. I kind of see what you're saying. So they started seeing each other's perspective. But what I realized with that story is that even though my friend's reality, his upbringing and his background was different than mine, it didn't mean that it was wrong. It didn't mean that it was false. It was just different. And I have to say, I mean, I apologized to him, and we made our amends, and, and I have to tell you that we're still friends today. And he's sitting back there, Daniel. <laughs> Stand up, Daniel. Come on, say hi to people. <laughs> You know, the, the funny thing about Daniel, he's got the beard. I know this Daniel has a beard too, but he's got a beard. He just doesn't have hair on the top, that's all. <laughs> so we're still friends today. He is literally one of my best friends. The, the funny thing about Daniel is, after I had my moment where I was like at my lowest point, I started to change and I started to read and learn new ways of being and new philosophies. What I realized is that Daniel was already living some of those things that I was now learning. He might have not known what they were in theory, but he lived them, you know? And here I was trying to change him. But who needed to change? Yeah, me. So going back to, to the purpose talk that I gave earlier, or a couple of weeks ago, about why are we here? We're here to give to others. So... When I was getting involved with Daniel and doing that, and when I was getting involved with my wife and trying to change her and try to save her, what was I really doing? Why was, why was, why was, I, why was I so, like, obsessed with, like, them changing, right? I was really distracting myself from myself, from my work, from my pain, from my healing. I was avoiding giving to myself. Because again, receiving is so uncomfortable. Really receiving. When someone is genuinely giving to you freely because they want to, not out of obligation, not because they're expecting anything, was really uncomfortable for me. I was not a good receiver. But why was that? Because I didn't think that I deserved it. I had a low self-esteem, a self-worth issue. 
I have way more. I didn't have a self-esteem issue. I was way confident, believe me. But that's what I was doing. I was masking my self-worth with overconfidence, with trying to help and save other people. Because if I did that, then that means I was doing something good. And that meant that I was good, that there was nothing wrong with me. So the self-worth issue. Again, I was masking everything with confidence. I thought that if I helped others that I was doing something good. And there's nothing wrong with helping others. We all do it now. But it's got to come from a healthy, genuine, authentic place. Okay? A place that where you're really, it's about the act itself. It's nothing to do with you. But again, more importantly, I wasn't giving to myself. I wasn't loving myself. I wasn't being kind to myself. Everything that I was trying to get them to do, I needed to do myself. I always tell people, whenever you're trying to change someone, the one that needs to change is you. Trust me. It's true. So I'm going to share one more story with you. When, when my wife and I separated, at the very beginning, our daughter was two. And she, of course, two years old. How do you deal with that? You don't know how to express your emotions. You don't know how to express your frustration. You may be angry. You may be confused. You're seeing mommy over here. You're seeing papi over here. They're not together. What's going on? And at the time, we had a, every two days, because she was still kind of little, so every two days we would kind of switch off. And this particular morning, my daughter came home and a tantrum. I mean, the worst I've ever seen to this day at two years old. She was kicking. She was screaming, like horse screaming. She, she says, I, I brought her in. I don't want to be here. She was telling me, I don't love you. I don't want you. I don't need anything from you. Leave me alone. That hurts to hear. And the reason I'm telling you that is because this was a moment, a pivotal moment in my life. Not only just for the, my relationship with my daughter, but it really showed my understanding of why we're here. My understanding of giving. Sure, I could have taken that personal. I could have, you know, gotten angry, getting upset, try to fight fire with fire, but I didn't. I was surprised by what I told her. I told her, it's okay, baby. You don't need to do any of those things for me. I'm here to love you. I'm here to give to you. And I will always do that for you. And I held her, and I rubbed her head, and I kissed her on the cheek, and she just fell asleep. Giving is tied to our purpose. It's because that's what we're here to do. We're here to give to others. We're here to serve others. We're here to help other people be better and grow. When, I, when I'm walking down the street and I go to a store and I open the door, whether it's for a man or for a woman, it doesn't matter. I open the door and I let them in. It's not because I'm doing it for the thank you. I'm doing it because that's who I am. That's why I was created. That's why I was here, to give. Okay? And so receiving is the same thing as giving. And for that, I'm going to give this mic to Jody. I really appreciate that. And yes, Angel's right. I was totally surprised this week whenever we were texting back and forth. And I was really just trying to be encouraging. Like, hey, this has been coming up. I'm so excited to hear you share on Sunday. You know, I, I, it's cool how you line up and get in sync with what the universe is doing. And he's like, let's do it together. And I'm like, dang it. No, that's not what I was going for. Anyway, um, I, I appreciate that so much, and, and I want to tell you guys a little bit, uh, you know, from me, it's like, I think you all would agree, and you, he asked you this initially, is like, do you think you're better at giving, or do you think you're better at receiving? And, you know, our initial response is, I'm better at giving. And I would have to say, and, and whether you think you're a good giver or not is not really what I'm trying to bring you to. The point is that I grew up in a situation, um, coming from a real fundamental background, church-based you know, it was taught to be a servant. You were taught that. Um, it was noble, and it was Christ-like to give. And so we were taught to give to this really extreme level. You know, I mean, I heard comments and things said sometimes that were like, you know, if you've got something bad going on in your life, find someone else. There's other people that have something going on in their life that's worse than what you're going through. Go help someone else. And so we were really taught to give to the point that there was nothing left, honestly. And 
it was, it was the thing that you did to prove your um, faithfulness, um, to be in good standing with God, you know, this, this giving mentality. And giving is such a good thing. And um, I started really thinking about this. Of course, having conversation brings all kinds of things up. But I was wondering if you guys with me, just right now where you are, if you could kind of adjust yourself in your seat just a little bit and kind of sit up a little bit. And I, I want to ask you to do something for me. Now, the cool thing is you've been doing this all along without even thinking about it, but this time I'm going to bring your attention to it. So I want you to take just a really deep breath in. Really quickly, just take a nice long breath in, and then I want you to just let it all out. And I want you to do it one more time. Take a deep breath in, and then just let it out. Now, isn't it cool that you've been sitting here this entire time, and you've been doing that over and over and over again? What I loved about just that very simple thing is that giving and receiving is essential to our life. It is part of who we are. What you just did is something you do every day over and over and over again. You give and then you receive. You do it in your physical body over and over again. But what I, what I started to realize about that one simple thing was we've had it backwards so long because we've taught, and the way I was raised, maybe you were too, and maybe this is totally something you can't relate to. I don't know, but I'm going to share this with you. We were taught about sowing and reaping. Anybody ever heard about sowing and reaping? Okay. So the whole thing about sowing and reaping is based on whatever I put out, that's what's going to come back to me. But it's all predicated on my initial action, right? It is all predicated on giving out first, then I receive. But think about how you live in your body. Now, if I asked you guys to just blow air out right now, you could do it, but could you do it over and over again? Just blow air out of your body. You can't do it. It's impossible. And really, the only way you can actually exhale is you have to do what first? You've got to receive first. This is where everything flipped around for me, and I started understanding We've been doing it backwards all along, and no wonder we are so spent. No wonder we are so wrung out in our life because we are giving out to the people in our life. We are giving out to everything else around us, like Angel said, hoping that these people are going to give to us what we won't do for ourselves. The thing we have to do first, we have to receive first. How do you pour water out of an empty pitcher? It's impossible. Unless you're Jesus and you can turn water into wine. But you know what I'm saying. You've got to start it first. You've got to start with something. He started with water at least, right? If you're starting with nothing and you're trying to give out of yourself nothing all the time, you are out of balance. And I started realizing in my own life that there were places in my life where I was out of balance. And I can say, and I don't know if anybody else in here can say, I was out of balance in my giving. Because I believed it was right. I believed, and it was my nature, you know, People would come and ask me for help, and I would say yes to things without even thinking about what that meant I was committing to, because it was just part of who I was, and this was good, and this was right, and this is what God wanted for my life. And so I think it's so critical for us to understand the reason we think we're good at giving really is not because we may be awesome at it, we may be doing it to an extreme, but it's because we've heard it so much. This is the part of our life that we get talked to the most about. What are you giving what are you doing for others? How are you helping the world? How are you helping the planet? How are you giving out of yourself? When really what we should be learning how to do is how to be good receivers. Because until you can learn how to be a good receiver, you'll never be a good giver. In fact, everything that you do, I'm going to venture and kind of go out on a limb here to say this, processing through my own experience. When you start doing things out of yourself for other people, a lot of times it's really just manipulation. A lot of times it's really just, I'm going to put this out and see what comes back to me. So that's not really giving. You're doing it because you are under the idea of sowing and reaping. If I sow this, I'll get this back. So it's different than giving and receiving. Inhale, exhale. And so for every, for every exhale in our life, there has to be an inhale, right? It has to work that way. Only we've got to flip the, the model around. Really, for every inhale, then we've got to give it out. We've got to take it in, and then we've got to give it out. And that has to happen over and over again in our life. 
And so I wanted to share just a couple of things with you I think are really interesting and unique because there's things that happen in our life and we not even realize what side we're on here, how, how far the pendulum has swung in our life. So I would tell you this, if you are all the way stretched out over here on this giving side, the chances are good that these are some of the feelings that you feel in your life, or you have felt these in your life. Maybe not right now, but you felt this in your life. Maybe you felt resentment. Maybe you have felt taken advantage of. Maybe you have felt some anger. When those feelings come up in you, that is a signal to you that you are swung out way, way over on the other end. You're in the giving part of your life, and there's no receiving. There's no inhale going on in your life, okay? But if you're on the, the inhale side, and here's the thing. How many of you would say that there have been times in your life where you've experienced, you know, at some point in your life, you're just in a mode where you can give, and you can pour out, and you feel good, and you're doing, and you're going, and you're giving of yourself in every way, and then something happens. You get sick. Your finances drop off significantly. What do you think that's about? I, I'm going to say probably you've been exercising this extreme in your life. And I'm not going to tell you that every day of your life is going to be perfectly balanced. What I am saying is when you don't recognize what you're doing in your own life and understand that everything I give out, I have to be able to receive back or I'm gonna, something's going to break. Just like what I just told you guys, if I told you just inhale and I never let you let that breath out, you're going to pass out in your chair because you're, you're cutting off the flow. You're cutting off the oxygen to your brain, which keeps you thinking and living, okay? So it's extreme. This extreme way of living will cause things in your life to break down until they don't function anymore. So if you're experiencing some things in your life like that right now, the chances are really good you've been out of balance in one of these ways. Now, if you're in a real extreme place of receiving, you're not doing anything, giving out at all. You're just doing this all the time, basically, okay? What you're probably going to feel is you're going to have feelings of uneasiness. Maybe you have feelings of depression. Maybe you have feelings of guilt. That's the extreme side of this giving and receiving coin, okay? So I wanted to share just a personal story with you about something that I had to learn because giving has always been the thing I've been taught to do. I have never had anyone talk to me about, Jody, you need to be a good receiver. And I don't know about y'all. Maybe somebody sat with you and to told you about this. But if not, then maybe I can share something good with you today. So, um, you know, I, I started having babies really young. I was a young mom. And um, my husband and I, when the kids were probably anywhere from ages three up to eight, we've got four kids, um, you know, we worked, both of us were, we were two-income uh, household, basically, made decent money um, for what was going on in the world. Um, but Christmas time was always a stressful time, okay? So I come from a family that just celebrates Christmas to the nth degree, and like everything is big. I mean, it's huge. And Santa Claus always got all the credit. He always brought the big, really nice gifts. Like mom and dad gave us good stuff, but that Santa Claus came. You know, it was awesome. And so this is what I remember from my childhood, and I'm wanting to recreate this for my children. You know, this was so important. And I'm sure many of you parents can relate to the fact that you just want good things for your kids. You know, you want to give them everything. Whatever they want, you want them to have it. Whether it's good or bad, you still want it for them. And I remember several Christmases, because of where we were financially, there were things we could do for our kids. But my parents always came in, and they were able to do more for my kids. And I remember feeling at one point, at first it was like, this is the way it goes. Grandparents give good gifts, and I'm going to give what I give, and it's all good. But then there was a time where it came in, and I started feeling resentful. I started feeling resentment toward them. Because I'm like, you're making it hard on me. I cannot keep up with you. And I'm the parent. I should be doing this. But the problem was I didn't know how to be a good receiver. Because here's what I really wanted. I just really wanted my kids to have that experience. But I was losing myself in the egoic idea that it had to come from me. So I'm going to tell you guys something right now. There's places in your life right now, maybe you're giving out, and you're not getting it back in that place, just like Angel said. But the truth is, is that you're, you're shutting down the flow all around you because you've decided it has to come this way. This is where it's going to come from, right here. Maybe in your job. 
Maybe you want to experience some financial increase in your job. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that you are shutting down the flow of all good in your life because you've decided it has to come through this particular direction. And so that's what happened to me. I had decided that it had to come from me, that the only way it could really be good was that it had to come from me. And I remember, I don't even know where I was. I think I'm sure I was driving in my car. That's where most of my epiphanies happen when I'm being quiet, you know, and I don't have anybody yelling at me in the back seat. But I was probably driving along. I was just being quiet, being by myself. And I had this little idea in my mind. I thought, isn't it silly for you to be upset about that? Because all you really wanted was the good thing. Does it really matter where it comes from? Jody? you're getting all of your desires fulfilled. They're just coming from all different directions. Learn to be a good receiver. And so that changed everything for me. And that has been a, that's been a progressive thing in me. I cannot tell you that from that day forward, I was good at just being happy about other people doing things that I really wanted to be the one to do. What I understood was, but I, I want them to have this, or I want them to have this experience, whether it's my kids or another person or whatever. Do I really care what the channel is that it comes from? It's about learning to be a good receiver. And so I want to just leave you with something. This is, a, this is an affirmation that I do with myself on a regular basis. And I, I have to remind myself about this. But on a daily basis, it might be a good idea for you too. And if you like it, you can take it with you today when you leave. But I just say this very simple thing. I receive good graciously in my life right now. And if you want to, you can say that with me right now. I receive good graciously in my life right now. And so whenever you feel spent, whenever you feel pulled in a, whatever direction you're going and you feel like you're giving and you're giving, take a breath, inhale, receive a little bit for yourself and maybe say that to yourself and allow God, allow the universe, allow the powers that are working in your life to help you see all the places where really you are able to receive, especially if it's not coming from the place that you have decided it must come from. Receiving is really about allowing. Receiving is about being in the flow. So you can't have receiving and giving and miss one of them. They have to work together, like Angel said. They are the same thing. And when you get in the flow of that, that's when the good starts happening in your life. That's when blocks start being removed. That's when things that you feel like you haven't been able to overcome or things that have been stuck in your life get unstuck because you really start working in the flow of what's real about who you are. So I'm going to, we're going to redesign the giving experience a little bit, okay? But it's going to start by you gaining empathy for your partner. So let's choose who's going to be the receiver. So choose who's going to be the receiver. Okay. Once you know who the receiver is, we're good to go. Give to me. Okay. So whoever's going to be the giver in this exercise, you're going to ask your partner some question, oh, a question, and you're going to really try to get a feel for where they're at, for how they're feeling, and you're just going to ask them, what is something that they've been needing or wanting? Something that they're trying to do, okay? What is something that they need, they've been wanting, they've been needing, so that they can do what they want to do, okay? And just jot down some notes. Create a little summary, like just write it down in your own words. What are you hearing from them? What are you feeling from them? Get a, get a good insight on where they're at. Go. And as, you, as you're wrapping it up, just kind of... Give me a thumbs up if you're done so I can kind of get an idea where everybody's at. Okay. Is that good? Everybody get an idea of the notes? Yes? A little more time maybe? Yeah? Good? Okay. All right. So those of you that were taking notes, the next thing you're going to do now with the notes that you took is you're going to create a problem statement. And I'll give you an example. You're going to write down your partner name. And you're going to say, needs a way to, whatever their needs or wants are, and the reason why. So, for example, if, I gave, if Jody was my partner, I would say, Jody needs a way to feel listened to because when she doesn't, she feels little. She feels small. Okay, just an example. This is not true, by the way. But 
just an example. So with your partner's information, write down a problem statement. Her name or his name needs to find a way to whatever the situation or the needs of the ones are and the reason why. It could also be a but. It could be a because. It could be a but. It could be like, well, I didn't know this was my, it could be surprisingly because, you know, however you want to put it, a problem statement about your partner. Partner's name needs a way to feel whatever that is because, how are we doing, how are we doing? Good, everybody good? Okay, so the next part is going to take a little thinking from you. You're going to write down three ways or three ideas in which you can offer to your partner so they can get those things. Three ways or three ideas that you can share with your partner how they can meet those needs or those wants. Don't share them with them yet. Just jot them down. Fresh ideas. Yeah. Rat, you know, out of the box ideas. So first, I just want to say thank you for being willing to do that, by the way. So, so give yourselves a hand, because that was a great exercise. And of course, I'm looking for someone or a few people that would like to share. The receivers, though. I want to hear from the receivers first. Someone who would like to share their experience. This is a safe place. Yeah, come on. Yeah. We got to get you on the video. <laughs> this was so wonderful. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity to sit next to Valerie, so she was able to be my giver. Is that correct? And as the receiver, she asked me the question that you would ask, what do I need? And the way that I answered was that I needed connection, personal interaction, to actually have physical interaction with people for the last year, I've been basically living in my house and um, not going out much because I've been fighting cancer. But now that that has been completed, thank you very much. Um, I am really craving that human connection. I've been online a lot, doing a lot of my work and mentoring online. But just being able to physically be within somebody else's energy space is absolutely, there's nothing like it because we are all one and because... That's the way we connect. So that was the big thing for me. And then Valerie, who's so awesome, came up with these amazing ideas. She said she was going to invite me to a girl's lunch, that she was going to introduce me to some of her friends, which is great since I'm kind of new in San Antonio, and to take a walk with me so that we could talk together and get to know each other more. Um, so that was really, really beneficial. Being able to receive that, that was Actually, the biggest lesson that I got from having cancer was that I needed to learn how to receive. And during that time while I was um, going through that, I didn't have um, opportunity to give. All I could do was receive. And I really sucked at it for a really long time <laughs> and had been giving and giving and giving for so long and not feeling the other end of it. So this was a great exercise and a wonderful talk. And I really got a lot out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah. Another one. Another receiver. <laughs> Don't be shy. Yeah, come up, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming. What is your name? Adam, this is Adam. Hello, everybody. Hello, Adam. It's my second time here, and I've enjoyed my time so far. So today's, uh, today's talk actually really uh, hit, hit home for me uh, with the whole extreme giving side and the uh, extreme receiving side. I felt a little bit like I was in both spots at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, so I kind of feel, feel like I was stretched, just kind of being pulled from all kinds of different directions. Wasn't really sure what, uh, what I needed to do or think or you know, things like that. So I did receive some really fascinating ideas. 
um, that I'm excited to try. One is to meditate and just shut up for five minutes and just <laughs> 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 just uh, sit and just be with my own thoughts, which is something I haven't been doing a lot lately. Uh, second uh, would be to ask myself, um, what will it take to know, hear, or see true guidance that will help me make the right decisions in my life? Which is uh, something I'm excited to try out because uh, you know I'm not very expectant. I always give with, with without trying to expect something in return. But uh, a lot of times, I just get so worked up, and I don't I don't really know why. Uh, but that ties into number three, which is relax and uh, be expectant and know that uh, know that the answer is coming, and I just need to. Just wait and uh, let let the Lord. Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Now I want to hear from a, at least one giver. The other side of this coin. Hi. You can have. Um, my husband said that he uh, needed patience and resources, love, more internal love for himself, belief in himself, solutions. Um, and uh, he, my statement was, Kevin needs a way to believe in himself because it will allow him to create more of what he wants or desires. And so how I can serve him and give to him is more positive verbal reinforcement for his to encourage him, listening from the be with place, not necessarily coming up with the solutions, but letting him talk it out and find his own solutions so he builds his own courage. And then uh, pointing out his, oh God, I can't even read my own writing. Oh, uh, pointing out his current wins, the wins that he's having right now. So when he has his small wins or big wins or whatever comes up that will build his self-esteem and build his courage uh, for me to acknowledge those wins and let him know, hey, that was, that was an awesome win. Did you just see how you won today? What, what a courageous being you are. So there's that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being willing participants. And the last thing I want to tell you guys is that when you receive, I said earlier that giving is receiving and receiving is giving, you're really giving someone the opportunity to give. So you have to, for the cycle to work, like Jody was saying, you have to receive, you have to give, and when you're actually receiving, you're giving someone the ability to give. Okay? Thank you guys so much for being here.